So hello everybody, this is Bante Joe here, and I'm just here at Ella in, uh, in the, I guess, the upcountry, the hilly country of Sri Lanka, with a beautiful view behind, and thought to record a short awada for the internet. So I thought that could start with a little meditation, so we can lean forward a bit and arch the spine, and look about three feet in front, and close our eyes. And can focus in on the breath. And know when it's coming in. And know when it's going out. If we breathe in a long breath, you can just know I'm breathing in a long breath. And if we breathe in a short breath, you can just know I'm breathing in a short breath. and can focus in on the breath at the tip of the nose <clears throat> and if notice any patterns of tension or tightness around the nose around the face you can just let those relax and can relax any patterns of tension around the cheeks, around the chin. And when watching the breath at the tip of the nose, it can be good to make mindfulness as continuous as possible. Being aware all the way through the in-breath. As the in-breath turns to the out-breath. All the way through the out-breath. And as the out-breath turns back to the in-breath again. Trying to make mindfulness as continuous as possible.
And before we finish meditating, we can spread thoughts of goodwill. Wishing may all beings all around everywhere be happy and at ease. May they put in place the causes necessary to be happy and at ease. And we can make the mind infinite. We can make it unbounded. All the way to the ends of the universe and beyond. In every dimension. May all beings all around everywhere be happy and at ease. And can open our eyes and do a short reflection on the Dhamma. Namo tasa bhagavato arahato samma sambhutasa Namo tasa bhagavato arahato samma sambhutasa Namo tasa bhagavato arahato samma sambhutasa Bhutang saranangga chami dhammang saranangga chami sangang saranangga chami Dityampi Bhutang Saranangga Chami Dityampi Dhammang Saranangga Chami Dityampi Sanggang Saranangga Chami Tatiampi Bhutang Saranangga Chami Tatiampi Dhammang Saranangga Chami Tatiampi Sanggang Saranangga Chami So I hope that everybody is having a great day wherever it might be. And we've just uh, finished uh, Charika, a walking tour, uh, finished a couple days ago, I think. Um, we went, uh, walked from the monastery up here to Bandarawela, and there were kind of uh, many nice and uh, uh, interesting experiences. I went with uh, two other monks, um, and that was, uh, it was nice to have their uh, companionship. So uh, one of the interesting things about going on Charika or going on this wandering is that there's this aspect of uncertainty to it and this aspect of flexibility. So I was talking with a fellow last night and he was asking kind of what plans I uh, might have for an upcoming trip and I said well you know on, on this Charika we just kind of uh, we had an outline but we went wherever we felt like. <laughs> so originally we were planning to walk down this main road and uh, come to uh, Bandarawela within two or three days but uh, as it happened, there, one of the monks uh, with, uh, with me uh, that who's, who came, uh, Venerable Posado, he's very intrepid and he plotted these kind of back routes and asked the villagers where the back routes were. So we actually had the opportunity to go along these kind of back routes and had some, uh, some nice and interesting experiences along the back routes. And there can be an overlap in this kind of uh, uh, way of doing charika with the way that a person practices meditation in that there are these kind of outlines to a person's practice. So I was chatting with somebody the other day and they had this, um, uh, they had the intuition that for them going this path of developing samadhi was the right way and uh, had an idea of how they wanted to do it, an idea of how it worked. And other people might have uh, an intuition that at least at this particular point for them cultivating, um, you might call the Vipassana topics, these uh, sanya or perception topics, is the right way to proceed. And uh, they might have an outline, a particular idea of how that will proceed, how their practice will proceed, a particular uh, way of how they want to structure their life in relation to the Dhamma. And one of the interesting things about this way of looking at things, having a kind of larger structure, is that it can be good but that the, the detailed outlines of how one will get there are often subject to change, often subject to uh, moving around. So one might find that one sets out with this idea that I'm going to, say, practice on Anapanasati meditation, I'm going to go here, I'm going to practice in this way for a while, and my life will schedule out in this way. And not necessarily bad to have a broad outline like that. But as one is going along, as one is practicing, one might find, okay, I've been practicing Anapanasati in this way, but I've reached a blockage. There's something happening in my meditation practice. I can't move forward with this. I don't know why. In this case, one has to be prepared to go and ask about the back roads. So 
In this case, sometimes one can go and ask other monks, one can discuss with one's fellow monks to see what they've done, see what's worked for them. And in this way, sometimes one gets an idea, oh, there's a back road here, I don't have to go up the main road, the main road may be blocked, this main plan I had may be blocked, but I can go around, I can take a detour, I can find a side road, and these are fellow practitioners, our fellow monks, our teachers, these are people who can sometimes point out side roads to us, sometimes um, who can give us advice about the way forward. And so in this way, the broad outlines of one's plan of practice uh, can sometimes be changed in their details, kind of have to go a side road instead of practicing Anapanasati now, maybe it's better that I practice uh, metta, maybe this is what's well, we're going to work well for my defilements right now. Maybe it's better if I practice a subhasanya. And these are things that one learns on the ground. Kind of one of the interesting things about this charika is you can't necessarily plan every single step, every single uh, place you're going to stay, every destination. There was one time that we, uh, we arrived at a temple and we thought we would stay there, but they didn't allow us to stay the night actually. So we had to leave and backtrack and go to another temple. And in a similar way, when one is practicing the Buddhist path, one comes up with obstacles. Sometimes one will meet with a physical injury that prevents one from practicing in the way that one had before. Sometimes one will find that uh, one is practicing, say, uh, in a particular way, and it just suddenly stops working. It just doesn't work well anymore. So I've heard that a lot with people who start with a particular technique. And kind of the technique is very helpful at first, but eventually one kind of plateaus with that technique and can't go forward with it anymore. And in this case, one has to be prepared to backtrack to uh, find a different route when these things are blocked off. If one develops a physical injury and can't sit in the same way that one was used to, one has to find a new way to sit. One has to try to find walking meditation or do something like this. Or sometimes there's ways that one can learn to heal the physical injury um, that people might not have told. And similar way, if one hits a blockage, one can't get any advice from anybody or uh, has tried different things that people may have suggested, but it's not working, then one has to find one's own way. One has to uh, backtrack a bit, maybe try to find an alternate route uh, without the advice of others, trying to go on one's own to see what works. And in these ways, one learns to move forward towards one's destination, so eventually, we were able to uh, make it to Bandarawela here. Um, we kind of uh, had a couple of unexpected things, had to uh, climb, uh, climb, ended up climbing one mountain, which was unexpected, and uh, uh, you know, had the, a couple of obstacles, nothing major, kind of uh, uh, having to move temples uh, close to nighttime, <laughs> try to find a place to sleep at night. Um, but all these things uh, were things that one could, uh, we were luckily able to find ways around them. So this uncertainty in one's path of practice is something that's inbuilt because the conditions around one are always changing. One can't manipulate every single condition so that one can perfectly plan it. But having a broad outlining of a plan is good. But at the same time, having enough flexibility to know when on the ground, uh, what's appropriate to change, one can change it. When it's appropriate to ask for advice, one can ask it. When it's appropriate to backtrack, to find a new way on one's own, then one can do that. So having the combination of both these things, both the broad outline and the flexibility, can help one move forward towards one's goals in one's meditation practice. It can help one move forward towards peacefulness of mind. It can help one move forward towards the noble attainments. And can help one move forward towards the end goal of Nibbana. So, those are some thoughts for today. So hope that everybody has a great day wherever it might be. And wishing you all the blessings of Dhamma practice. Pati Pati Saranai.